What's up, YouTube? This is Mike from Mass here, channel's Mass Aquariums, and tonight's video is going to be on patience, patience, patience. Now, as you know, I'm from Massachusetts, and uh, here in the Northeast, we don't have patience for anything. We don't have patience when we drive, we don't have patience at a convenience store. You know, you're in the convenience store and the guy in front of you is getting a million scratch tickets and he wants two of these and four of those and one of these and in your head you're just like, this is a convenience store. Just grab it and go. Let's go. Convenient. But, anyway, having kids will give you some patience. And having aquariums will definitely give you some patience. I know, me anyway, you get an aquarium, brand new fish tank, you just want to throw everything you've got at it. You want to throw this in, throw that in, throw your fish in, throw your plants. You, you just want to set it up as quick as possible. But you know what happens after that is it's set up and then your project's done. So I want this video to be basically on teaching the beginner to have some patience with an aquarium. Make it last. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy every part of this. And I would say for a beginner, Start up a low-tech tank. Don't get, don't jump into dirt substrate and high lights and CO2. You're just going to give yourself a lot of nightmares and hassle trying to get your tank balanced. Now, this is my 75, and it's been up for a little over six months, and I finally have everything dialed in. It's taken me six months to get this tank dialed in with how long I have to keep my lights on, how much am I dosing my ferts, how much CO2 or liquid carbon am I adding, uh, how, much, how much of the dirt do I actually vacuum when I do my water changes, how often do I do my water changes, how many fish do I need, what kind of fish do you need. Balance in an aquarium is, in my opinion, very difficult to achieve unless you're you know, Superman, and you just you just know exactly what you're doing. Everybody's aquarium is different, and it takes a while to get them balanced. Now, like I said, I just got this balanced, and you know, it always looks really good in the videos. But there is, you know, before some algae that you might not see, or you know, maybe the fish load was a little too high. My ferts, I were too low at one point and then they were too high. I was trying to dial in my CO2 without overkill, but I finally have this tank dialed in, if you can say, as perfectly as you can in an aquarium. Now, things are always going to arise that you can't control, but I have very, very minimal algae. Uh, people who say they have no algae in their tank, they're just not looking good enough because it's there whether it's uh, you know a little bit of green spot algae here and there or some brown diatoms here and there you know it happens now I have my tank just where I want it I have the right number of fish I have obviously heavily planted but all the plants uh, are nice and green there's, there's minimal minimal algae on them the CO2 is finely dialed in my ferts are dialed in and it's gonna take a while and you just have to have patience. Don't rush into things. Don't freak out if something's going wrong. Uh, get yourself a whiteboard like I've shown you in my other videos and, and keep track of your dosing and what you're doing and if you have to change things here and there, which you're gonna. Dial stuff down, dial stuff up. Don't do it all at one time. You know, it's a science project. You have to take your variables, you have to take out one variable at a time. Don't all of a sudden Start increasing your CO2 and increasing your ferts, and then if something still is wrong, you don't know what you did. Start off slow, take your time, and don't freak out, because especially in planted tanks, when you get plants in, they're going to be, for the most part, especially from Planted Aquarium Central, sponsor me for my 100, 100 subscriber contest, they come in absolutely gorgeous. They're beautiful plants, and you're going to get some melt back, and you might see a plant that almost looks dead, but... Just have patience. For the most part, 90% of the time, it will come back to life. It just went from someone's tank that's different to in a box for three days or whatever, how long it takes to get there. Then you put it in your tank and, you know, it will come back to life for the most part. And you just have to have patience. Plants are very 
slow growers for the most part, unless you're, you know, you're cranking up your CO2 and lights and, and you don't have any algae, then they'll grow like crazy, but you just got to be patient. I'm probably going to say patient about 50 million times in this video, but you, I need to stress to the beginners and to everybody out there, be patient with your aquarium. It'll come around, you'll figure it out, and once you do, you know, it'll make your life so much easier. You can come down in the morning, even feeding your fish, you have to dial that in. How much are they going to eat in a little bit of time? How often do you have to feed them? I only feed my fish once a day. I feed them in the morning, they plow through it, guess what? They're not going to die. Fish, especially wild fish, they're opportunistic fish. They'll eat, sometimes they probably won't eat for days. They'll eat when they have the chance. Most of the time they're probably hiding to prevent themselves from getting eaten. But have uh, patience with your tank. Um, I'm loving this 75 right now. I finally got my, you know, even my circulation pumps are finally dialed in where they're right at the perfect space apart, where I got my outtake, I got two circulation pumps, and all the plants have a nice sway, everything's growing good, uh, and then everything really looks good right now. All my, uh, like my big melon sword here that had some brown algae on, it's all gone, I got a few autos that are taking care of that, and, uh, my German Blues, for all you watching German Blues update, just about two months, they're doing awesome, and I can really tell, especially with the German Blue, how uh, finicky those, those guys can be, if they're thriving in your tank, then you're doing something right, because those are some hard fish to keep, in my opinion, and if you keep them no problem all the time, then you're the man. So, that's, uh, that's my video, patience, 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 I'm gonna, uh, show you a quick video, give you a quick pick of my 30, and I, I suggest every beginner starts off low tech. So let me give you a shot of this one real quick. This is my 30. It's no dirt, gravel substrate, uh, very low light, 17 watt bulb on this thing, and the plants grow absolutely great. I have never ever, believe it or not, in over a year with this tank had any algae you know a little bit of green spot once in a while that you can scrape off or you know that's about it I've never had brown algae I've never had beard algae any type of hair algae and I believe it is really because of low tech low lights low furts no dirt you're giving this tank minimal minimal to survive for these plants to survive on and they're gonna suck up everything they need and this is the bacopa back here I mean I'm, I'm constantly cutting it in half and putting it different places and the jungle val as you can tell is killing it uh, I recently got some uh, frog bit which you know has quickly become one of my new favorite plants it's just really cool top water floater and it grows these nice roots and it, it propagates real quick you just wait for one to sprout off and grow its own roots and you can just pick it right off with your hand I love uh, actually coming down and checking how this frog bits doing and it's really it's doing great in low light I have read and done some research that it needs a few things but I don't really think it does I think a low light tank is the way to go do not, if you're a beginner, do not get a huge tank and dirt it and get crazy highlights and, you know, get get yourself into a project like that. Just do a low-tech tank. Start it off small. Throw some plants in there. Java Fern's a great plant. Jungle Val. Amazon Sword is, you know, by far one of the best beginner plants. Java Fern, Amazon Sword, Anubius. Any low-light plant that is not going to struggle to grow. You know, even this dwarf lily in uh, low-light, it's constantly shooting pads up to the top. Every other day, i got to cut one. It just shoots it right up. This uh, pygmy sword here has two runners that are flinging off the back. And, you know, it takes a while, and they're going to grow slow. But, you know, it's low-tech, low-light. And I really think you beginners need to start with that. Then you can move on to a highlight tank. High, highlight, heavily planted, go with some dirt substrate, and 
you know, start off small and go to your next tank. That's what I did. And my next tank is uh, going to be a 50 tall. I'm going to go African cichlids because I love watching my African cichlid videos. My boy Moses DC has a beautiful African cichlid tank. And, you know, it's something different. And uh, I can't wait to show you guys some videos on that once I get it going. So, this is Mike from Mass. Patience, patience, patience. And I am out.